My name is Della, or currently. I've been married to my husband Davis for three years. It's in these three years, I've started to feel really fed up with my life. The reason behind this is that Davis inherited the family business from his father and has been dumping all the management responsibilities on me without understanding the ropes himself. I was originally quite good with numbers, having chosen the economics department in college, but Davis, unlike me, was a liberal arts guy. Davis and I met at a mixer hosted by a friend from college. I used to be an avid reader of novels, so Davis and I hit it off, recommending good reads to each other. We started dating and discussed marriage as we graduated college. After he proposed, when I visited his home, his mother Jennifer greeted me with a smile, saying, Stella, I heard you're really good with numbers. Davis told us, you'll be safe here with us, she laughed. I had no idea he was running a family business, and there was never any discussion about me working at the company after we got married. On the contrary, I was keen on working at my current job, having worked hard to get it, I didn't understand why suddenly I had to leave my job to join Davis's family business. Now, my father-in-law has been presiding as the president of the company, but he mentioned that he plans to leave everything to Davis in a few years. Honestly, I became very worried because Davis, who'd never really dealt with accounting and didn't understand the first thing about it, was expected to run the business. Yet both, he and his father kept saying, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. I was congratulated by many, and my parents even told me, if you miss this opportunity, you won't be able to get married. So I let myself go with the flow and got married. Honestly, I started to worry whether it was all right to continue marrying Davis in this manner. I should have probably ignored what others were saying and followed my heart, then I wouldn't have to endure this miserable experience. I definitely think that those who were pressuring me to get married soon weren't really considering my happiness at all. They probably just wanted to boast to others about how they pushed me to marry, inviting them to the wedding and bragging I was the one who, I was the one who nudged her to get married. Not a single person thought about what happened to me in the future due to Davis and my in-laws. Because of this, I've ended up in a hellish situation. It was around the time Davis and I had been married for a year when he said, oh, lately, dad's been having back troubles, so I really want you to help out with my company seriously. It was around the time I had just about hit 30, having run away from marriage, because I enjoyed my current job, that we got married. I think we discussed this when we were getting married. I want to continue my current job. If I can't continue, I can't consider marrying you, I told him. I had told him this several times before we got married, but he never truly agreed. Yet, he also said he had no other options and didn't want to break up, so even as I approached 30, he continued dating me. I started to find him increasingly annoying, but I felt happy and valued when he said he loved me. I think Davis noticed I felt that way, which is why he never truly intended to respect my opinions. He was just making promises to manipulate me into doing what he wanted. The situation is different now compared to before we got married, right? Until now dad handled all the numbers, but he can't do it anymore, so I want you to do it. You wouldn't want the business to go under before a child is born, right? Well, that might be alright too. I believe I can support the family on my own, and if the family business collapses, I can suggest other jobs to Davis. To be honest, Davis's income is a fraction of mine. I'm the one keeping the household afloat with my income. Therefore, quitting my job was absolutely not an option. However, whenever I tried to explain that, Davis would ultimately yell at me loudly, saying, Are you fine with the company that has been passed down through generations and my family collapsing? Even when he says that, the family business is just a company established by his grandfather, making him the third generation. So when he grandiosely states, passed down through generations, I can't help but snicker at the sheer scale and duration. He's implying as he keeps saying that, he talks big without even being able to earn decently is what I think, but he probably has no idea. But there's no one on my side in this house. When my father-in-law, who is supposedly not feeling well, learned that I am not helping out at my husband's company, he lectured me, saying it is a wife's duty to help out at her husband's company. I couldn't help but sigh thinking, where did the notion of him being weak go? Furthermore, my mother-in-law chimed in with a strangely superior attitude, saying, when I was young, I gave up doing what I wanted to help out at my husband's company. Don't just think about yourself. I raised Davis while working at the company, you know. You don't even have children yet, and you're complaining. What could she possibly have helped with the company when she, just like Davis, isn't good with numbers at all? I bet she only did minor tasks like making tea, 
photocopying, or answering phone calls. But no matter how incorrect their opinions are, no one is on my side. On the contrary, the three of them have conspired to gang up on me, throwing Osmo away my belongings and lecturing me when I am about to sleep, pushing me into a corner. Because of this, I've ended up causing trouble at my own company and reluctantly decided to help Davis with his work. But there are conditions. Since I will be able to afford living expenses if I quit my job, I've decided to continue working while helping out with household chores on weekends. Then for some reason, my in-laws suggested, in that case, we don't need to give you a salary, you're only helping a little on your days off, which left me baffled. I decided to continue with my job because it doesn't pay well, so why did it turn out that I don't deserve a salary? I cannot accept this. How is it? I realized that it's useless to discuss anything with them anymore, so I started working. There's one thing I've realized since I started working. Despite his boasting about managing this company, it turned out that my father-in-law lacked a sense of business management. He somewhat understands the numbers, but often doesn't know what to do with them, frequently getting corrected by business partners. I understand why Davis doesn't earn much. I thought to myself as I worked, as due to my nature, once I decide to do something, I cannot do it halfway. So, I completed the tasks diligently. And as two years passed since I started helping, even the part-time workers, who initially looked at me with skepticism, began to follow my instructions more than Davis's. In fact, the revenue has significantly increased compared to when I wasn't around, and 90 of the current sales are thanks to me. All the part-time workers who know this have become my allies. However, there are still people who do not appreciate me, that's my mother-in-law Jennifer and my husband Davis. It's tough to say. Davis claims to be on a business trip and rarely shows up at the company even on weekdays. He's never secured any new contracts while out on business, leaving me and the part-time workers dumbfounded as to where he's actually going. Moreover, my mother-in-law Jennifer comes by when I'm not around and says to the part-time workers, why is our daughter-in-law such a failure? I heard she doesn't want to quit her job and is only half-heartedly helping out here. Though the part-time workers know that the company is barely surviving, thanks to me, and could argue against Jennifer's opinions, if they do. Jennifer takes it out on me. Therefore nobody said anything. While working, the part-time workers simply give non-committal responses as Jennifer continuously badmouths me. Besides, she's over 30 and doesn't even have kids yet. She held on to Davis for years without marrying, and now doesn't even want to have children. What a defective piece. Ugh. I wish she'd just get a divorce already, she seemed to be saying. I was astounded when I heard this from the part-time workers, because I've stated multiple times that if you're planning to make me quit my job, I won't marry, yet Davis insisted on not breaking up. I was indifferent about having children, but if Davis wanted them so much, he should have just left me and married someone else promptly. But he clung to me, and we got married just like that. He's tacitly accepted that I work at the company, and even though I am taking care of the household, only my mother-in-law keeps nagging and complaining. We husband. Davis, who wanders around without attending to the company, is a piece of work too. But what always tires me is my mother-in-law. It's Jennifer, who never helps, but shows up only to badmouth me. I sometimes wish she would quickly retreat. Retreat to the countryside, just like my father-in-law did. The part-time workers also seem to be losing their fondness for Jennifer, who never does anything but is always ready to speak out. Gradually, they stopped responding to her incessant complaints about me. Then, Jennifer, who no one listened to anymore, started throwing tantrums, saying Stella must have brainwashed everyone. I am the most important person in this company. If you ignore me, I will fire you. However, the president of the company is no longer my father-in-law, but Davis, so... Jennifer is not the president's wife anymore, and she never had any power to fire anyone in the first place. But then, Jennifer started consulting with Davis, saying things like, Hey da Davis, I think we don't need Mally, she's already old. I think her attitude towards me is bad. Davis, who rarely comes to the company and doesn't know much about the part-timers, began to consider firing the veteran part-timer, Dimoli. I couldn't help but interject. What are you saying? Mally is a veteran among the part-timers. It would be a problem if she got fired. However, Davis, who mostly leaves the work to me, didn't appreciate my input and yelled, don't question my decisions. Moreover, upon hearing my objections, Jennifer also chimed in, saying, then you, annoying person, are fired too. You can't work and can't even have children. We don't need such a useless person here. 
is furthermore. Davis, who was standing next to her, was nodding in agreement, which was unbearable. I decided to sign the divorce papers that Jennifer had brought from the city hall that same day. What blankly staring at it? I thought to myself, this company is doomed. I informed the part-time workers through our WhatsApp group chat that Davis and Jennifer had fired me and that I would be divorcing and resigning. Although shocked, the part-timers calmly discussed quitting their jobs too. They were fully aware that without me, the company would be in deep trouble. Davis, who rarely shows up at the company, and the boss's mother, who brags without being able to do any work, staying in a company that might collapse at any moment, leaving only them behind, made no sense. I quickly packed my belongings and moved into the singles dormitory of the company, where I have continued working without any change when I informed my supervisor about my divorce. My worried colleagues were happy for me and decided to toast to my newfound freedom. I then took some paid leave to rest and rejuvenate. For a while, not even a week had passed when I received a call from Davis. Yo, what is this certified mail about? Oh, can't you read now? Well, I guess if you are gallivanting with your mistress, instead of working even simple documents become hard to decipher. Phew, how do you know about N and was a college girl who Davis met almost daily lying that he was on a business trip and was aware that Davis was married to me but continued the affair with him. So I demanded compensation from her as well this time. The certified mail Davis received read, I know you are cheating, so pay $20,000 as compensation. We're already divorced, aren't we? Why do I have to pay you money? What are you saying? I knew about your affair before the divorce, and by the way, I can demand compensation for adultery within three years from the time I became aware of it. I retorted to which I could hear him screaming damn it from the other end of the line by the way, and thought Davis was rich because he was the owner of a self-employed business, but the money he used for the affair was actually earned by me. Most of the company's revenues were generated by me so since I'm out of the picture, and said I don't need such an old man with no money I approached him, because he had money I didn't hear. I had to pay alimony speaking such nonsensical things. No he must be just plain stupid a woman who gets fooled by such a man and has affairs with married men and easily cheats with college girls, and a former husband who is shocked to be asked for alimony were simply unbelievable. And then there was the most unbelievable person. Hey Stella, all the part-timers quit. You know, did you say something weird come back now and work without pay? Because work isn't going around due to you. Even when told such things, I have been working without pay for these two years due to my idiotic in-laws thoughts. And now I am divorced from Davis. He can have nothing to do with that company. So in response to Jennifer's contact, I s said, who is this? I have nothing to do with you guys anymore and hung up. No matter how you think about it. Jennifer's claim that working without pay because all the part-timers quit was absurd, but it seemed like a matter of course for Jennifer. I don't know what she was thinking, but she seemed to be going around telling people. The divorced wife won't come back even though I told her to work at home without pay. I won't be satisfied unless I make her work without breaks without pay this time, because it's that woman's fault that all the part-timers quit. And it seems she was pointed out by many people that you're the strange one. Who do you think will come back if you tell a stranger who has already divorced your son and has become a stranger to work without pay? However, it seems that Jennifer, who received the remark, became even more furious and raised her hand to the person who pointed it out, saying, there's no way I'm wrong. Because of that, it seems that she was charged for medical expenses. The police also intervened, and it turned into a big fuss. Davis is already being asked for LA money due to his infidelity from me, Yet his mother hurt someone and asked Davis to pay for the medical expenses after getting involved with the police saying, Davis please pay. A big fight broke out between mother and son at home. It seems they even called their father who had retreated to the countryside to judge who was at fault but as soon as the father-in-law understood the seriousness of the matter after hearing the current situation from the two, he seemed to have fled saying it has nothing to do with me. If both did all this, don't rely on me. I'll cut ties. Both Davis and Jennifer seemed to be dumbfounded watching the father-in-law who had just returned to the countryside. However, after a while, when they realized they had been abandoned by their father, they finally understood the gravity of the situation and both started to panic. And what the panic too decided was, if we reconcile with Stella, everything will be back to normal with a very weak idea. From my point of view, there was no way that option existed. But Davis came to the company where I work and tried to find out where I was. However, I was using my paid vacation and was on a spa trip. 
Well, even if I wasn't on a speed trip, no matter how much of an ex-husband he was, there's absolutely no way to tell a divorced partner about an employee's information. Employee's information. Just give me Stella's whereabouts. If she reconciles with me, I don't have to pay the alimony for cheating, and she will maintain my company from now on. He seemed to have said at the entrance of the company. It goes without saying that everyone who heard those words at the scene was utterly disgusted. Then, my boss who was at the scene and colleagues who were worried about me confronted Davis and firmly told him, Who do you think you are? You left the company to Stella while you were indulging in affairs every day. Stella is too good for someone like you. Rather, what benefit does Stella have in reconciling with you? You have no money, you cheat, your attitude is big, and you have no gratitude. If you ask 100 people, all 100 would say it's impossible to reconcile with such a man. Meanwhile, Jennifer was visiting the homes of the part-timers who had quit the company, asking why they had resigned. It seems Jennifer wanted to extract a testimony from me saying that I encouraged others to quit by saying let's all quit together. But no matter who she asked, they responded if Stella leaves that company will surely go down the drain. You and your son can't manage, everyone knows that. It's natural for everyone to want to quit before being manipulated by your incapable hands, right? I couldn't help but chuckle, thinking that's probably true. No matter how you look at it, Davis and Jennifer don't have any popularity. No one would return to that company, even if those two said, come back to our company. In fact, when Davis, who finally started doing his job properly, called the clients to inform them that he had let me go, most of them refused to continue doing business, saying, oh, if Stella is not there, we don't want to continue the trade. There was only one place that agreed to continue the business, but even then, the deal was at a much lower price and far less profitable than before. In such a state, they couldn't continue running the business and eventually, Davis's company went under. Even though they couldn't bring me back to the company, and the son ended up ruining the company, Jennifer was still going around telling people my son wanted to reconcile, but since she didn't come back, the company went under. It's all the daughter-in-law's fault. But apparently, she had been reported to the police for raising her hand against someone recently and nobody wanted to approach her or listen to her ranting in the middle of the residential area because of such repeated incidents. I heard that Jennifer has become reluctant to leave her house, worried about the neighbors' views. Well, it's their just desserts. As for Davis, he had to sell his parents' house to somehow raise money as there were claims for compensation, but now he is to earn living expenses for himself and his mother so he seems to be looking for a job. However, he's he who has never worked seriously before is unlikely to find a job that pays well immediately and seems to be working while having big arguments with his mother almost every day, panting heavily. As for me, I have been entrusted with significant tasks and am now enjoying fulfilling days. Thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. If you resonated with the content, please leave a positive rating and a comment